Welcome to the family with Alex Brandt Bernard Rasmussen. Andy Brandt Bernard. Co host Catherine Brandt. See, there you go. We are all covered. There's no question about it. Our sick dog, too. Life is good. good. Alex, mm-hmm. didn't you get the call? You're supposed to be wearing either blue or purple. I oh, yeah. I've got blue in here. We're wearing oh, there you yeah. got blue in there. There you go. High frequency such a, colors. Very such beige. a sage thing to say. I have blue. I have blue. Very Thanks beige. I have beige pants. I have fun socks though. Oh, look at those. Socks. How do I there get? Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Fun, fun socks. Fun socks. Those are pretty fun. Yeah. See. No question. <laughs> my goal is pretty fun. <laughs> I, my goal oh, is to talking. dress so the second graders will tell me that they oh, like my yeah. clothes. Ah. Uh, so I'm Second just going to be like Miss Frizzle from now on. Is my I'm like right. more colors and patterns and wildness. Hey, that's exactly how you dressed in elementary school. So exactly. And works. I'm like, let's get back to it. Yeah, yeah you were the kid with the polka dots, the flowers, yeah. and the stripes. That's and I'm true. like, Currently I don't wearing care. polka dots and you flowers. Just, you just go right ahead, sweetie. Well, everyone <laughs> in the 90s especially, <laughs> a lot of colors. I remember I wearing it. a lot of tie-dye and like neon colors. I, had I this, love tie-dye. I had this neon, neon jacket colors. that was like, it had neon pink and blue and yellow and Fantastic. stuff. And oh, yeah, you did. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the first jacket I can remember. I was yeah, probably. Alice went through her lime green, lime neon green, lime yeah. green phase. A lot of lime green. Quite a few years. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. There you go. And there was the black phase. Only would wear black. Yeah. Well, that's because I was the sweatiest human alive. And <laughs> it's the only thing that could cover up my pit <laughs> sweat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, who was that, Catherine? Because I, I, you've met yeah. him before, but I had a friend. All he would do, I mean, Tino does it too. Tino, he's the one. All he would do is wear black clothes. He doesn't wear any other. LA clothes Nick. Black. Uh, yeah, he only. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've Nick. never seen him wear anything except black. Oh, that's black. true. So a couple of Italian I'd... guys. You know, it, it it's funny because when we would travel from uh, Florida back up to Minneapolis, and you'd go down the gates, and you could everybody that would be in one gate would all be wearing black. Everybody would be wearing black and, every, and everyone was going to New York. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, it's just, first of all, when you live in Manhattan, you probably don't have any closet space. So keeping everything yeah. black just simplifies your life yeah. right. and not having to keep up with fashion. You just buy a new black thing and everyone thinks that you're cool. Yep. A new and then, there and then Minnesota was usually khaki, a lot yeah, of khaki, big, big khaki. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I'm on a khaki. All right, so I got to tell you guys, I started my Livia program yesterday, losing weight with Livia. Livia. And I got I on. I made the, the pudding. You, she made the pudding. It was wonderful. It was, it was delicious. Anybody could do it. I got on the scale this morning. <clears throat> my first day on the diet, I lost four pounds. Mm. So I did the math in order to, because I want to drop a total of 50 pounds to get down to 214, which I have not been to 214 since I was 16 years old. That and I started seems... lifting weights. Why is that? A, is that a reachable goal? Yeah. Why two fourteen specifically? Two fourteen for a because man of... his height is probably reasonable, isn't it? Oh, God. Yeah, like why not two fifteen or two ten? Well, and the thing you have to consider too is your. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Just why fourteen? Well, doesn't everybody well, like... va- bounce around four or five pounds? I mean, I yeah. 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 But the I thing always you have to think about too is like your bones. He does have big yeah, bones. Yeah, you got those big, bones. You have big bones. Yeah, I'm a very big bone guy. Like a, a guy your height that had a small frame, 214, it'd be like, yeah, that seems, but 214 for you seems like that's. Yeah, and we'll, as we get there, we'll see what happens. Don't but stress yourself. It's not going to take very long. That's a good, because I lost four pounds the first day. So if I just do that every day, I'll only be on the diet for another 11 and a half days anyway. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you just have to burn, I think just have to burn like 14,000 calories a day. Yeah, isn't it usually like, I feel <laughs> like every time it's like you lose like 20 pounds super fast and then it like yes. mm-hmm. slows down. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I know men for some reason can lose 20 pounds real easily. I don't know that's why that fast. is. Um, but okay. So you, Livia has, you have snacks. Mm-hmm. Bars. I like to get desserts. pretzels and puddings and chips and that stuff. Yeah. And then you, on your own, you eat lean proteins. Yes. And low starch, right? And low, starch. low starch, low proteins, yeah, which worked last night. I had a really nice dinner. I thought yeah, it was good. Yeah, you had good. shrimp. You need shrimp. I had shrimp. Shrimp. There's you do no like a shrimp. We yeah. had shrimp, celery, and some banana pudding from Livia. So that went That's very well. That's a meal. Combo. <laughs> but... It's banana pudding with shrimp just sounds yeah. I don't and know celery. If 
I like celery blocking it. Oh, okay. I could eat celery with anything. I love celery. I love celery too. Yeah, Every, yeah, I mean, nice my my bridal shower. Two of my friends planned it together, or maybe no, it was either one. My baby shower, my brow shower. I don't remember, but two of my Some friends shower. planned it together. Paige and Ariel planned it together, and Paige was like, "We have to make sure we have celery." And Ariel was like, why would we make sure to have celery? Nobody likes celery. It's one of those things that's always there, but nobody really touches. And Paige well, like, Alex the celery. loves celery. I, <laughs> I love celery. celery. I Although I have to celery. say, I went to oh a farmer's market down here in Florida, and the celery bunches are massive. Yeah. And they huge. taste so strong. Really? Compared to yeah. grocery store celery. I almost was like, I don't know if I like this because it was so yeah. very strong taste. Different. Yeah. I think it's just because it just came out of the ground, you know, yeah. and it was yeah, the farm the they are, yeah. sitting in a bag yeah, for yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Or picked when it's not actually ripe mm -hmm. and then sitting yeah. in a truck and maybe mm -hmm. never really because it tasted like the most intense celery that yep. you've ever had. I was celery really seed surprised taste by it. Sometimes yeah. celery can be bitter. A little bit. Yeah, if you, if you let it sit in the ground for too long, yeah. I think it becomes bitter. Yeah. I just bought celery the other day, and I'm going to have Love celery. celery. Yeah, that was a care that, yeah. For school. Celery with ranch, celery with peanut butter, why not? I haven't had celery in I don't even know how long. Although, you put it in the stew, I can eat it that way. Cream cheese is also Cream good with it. Celery. Mm -hmm. yep, I don't know. Like, when people talk about how, like, you know, oh, I, so boring, I can't eat uh, broccoli or radishes or whatever, it's like, I've been wanting to eat a plate of vegetables for like 15 years. Really? You I probably never will be able to again. <clears throat> really? No. You just can't digest them? Mm. Nope. Causes yeah, well, very could, intense stomach pain. Yeah, your mother could never, she never ate vegetables. That's why nope, your whole never. family doesn't eat vegetables. I well, a lot of people just choose things. not to eat vegetables. I think it's because it bothered her. It, it, oh, it definitely did. Because yeah. it bothers me. So it's Toots' oh, fault yeah. that it bothers you. Is that Jude? More for me. Yes. Oh. Yep. Snoring away. Snoring what? away. Yeah. Judith Priest. So what's going on in the world today? Anything good? I don't even know. I was up and running out the door. God, Sorry. my voice right now sounds about an octave higher. Because when I got out of bed this morning, I was talking mm -hmm. like this. Uh, like, you oh love it and you know. You oh, yeah. I guess, yeah you lay it up. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Hello, feel everyone. good. I don't feel very well. Thank you for listening. Well, Dan's in office today. Oh, that's new right. job. Oh, you had to go into the office today? Yep, he's in office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So he's meeting all of the people that he will work with all right, today. Good. And then we are me I'm going out with him later this evening, and I'm going to meet everybody. From his office? Yeah. Oh wow! Are what if you hate him already? Yeah, already. Huh. What if yeah. you hate him? Alex can get along with most people. I was gonna say, I there are like two people I don't get along with, literally. So it's who is it? You, <laughs> Nana -na -na and Bop Bop. <laughs> you two. <laughs> you two. Ah, itchy eyes. Yeah, something is definitely blooming. Oh, up there's a storm. no doubt about it out there. It's uh, kicking. Did you guys it's have any eclipse vision yesterday? Was there I didn't eclipse? even notice that the it got even a little darker, and we were running around around one o'clock. We went to the grocery store and stuff, and it didn't even seem. No. It was two o'clock here, but yeah, since you're more south. Oh, we're well, yeah, and we're on the yeah. east coast, so I don't know. I yeah, didn't even. I, I paid zero attention to it. I don't know why. I usually kind of think that this sort of stuff is cool. But because it was so overhyped, yeah. it made me lose interest in it. Well, Alex. Your oppositional defiance disorder. That's exactly right. It was cloudy, <laughs> though, so you couldn't see it yesterday anyway. Right? Oh, wait, we couldn't see anything. No, you couldn't There's, even tell yeah, anything yeah, was happening. Not at all. We, yeah, oh. the, we the, every kid in the school had eclipse glasses. We were really? prepared. Yeah, oh. everybody was like, we're all going to go out and watch it together as a school. And then. Yeah, I know. I well, didn't what you even... should have done is just hold, held up a dark blanket and had him go under it. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's what it would be we're like. Only, we're only supposed to have a partial eclipse because we weren't in we're the at direct like 50 path. We're at like 50% or something? Yeah, it was oh. supposed to be like the sun. The yeah, moon. I'm, I'm guessing it would be <laughs> the same way down here because we're very far south. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, but we it was extremely cloudy yesterday, so we didn't see yeah, any of it. But then we ended cover. up watching. Yeah, it, truly. 
We ended up watching it on NASA, had like a yeah. live stream of there it in go. Indianapolis. They're going yeah. mm -hmm. to have the best vision, uh, visuals yeah. anyway, so might as well. Yeah, so we were that. like, that's, and it was weird. Like when it was just that, it looked like a big eye looking at you. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Yeah. You yeah, can definitely was... see 5,000 years ago people seeing that and being like, well, the, the world is ending. ending. Yeah, the world is dead. Armageddon. You know what most people think, which is kind of interesting? Is they do oh. think that the sun and the moon orbit at on the same orbit. What? No, the sun is I think four hundred million miles further away than the moon. It's what do you seven mean on the same light orbit? seconds, I think. Seven light seconds. How Something far like would that, that. be? Let's How far see. would that be? Far away is I, heard, this. I well, remember. It depends on the where we are in our orbit, of course, but ninety-three right. million miles on average. Oh, 93 million miles, that's what it is. Yeah, no, okay. that's a long way. So it's a uh, ways away. And there will be another <laughs> eclipse like that in 20 years. 27, yeah, 20. I thought. Is it 20? 27. 40, 2044, perhaps. I think, right? Yeah. yeah, so in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. so there you go. Because okay. I remember yeah. all the kids, we were saying to the kids, like, it'll happen another 20 years. And so we're like, you'll be 28 years old. Yeah. Most I strong. remember having an argument at some sort of party with somebody about that the Earth is actually farther away from the sun when you're in minnesota in the mm -hmm. winter time yeah it's all about the tilt it's the tilt, yeah, it's mm -hmm. tilt and yeah. they just were like that cannot be right impossible <laughs> how can that not be right I'm like, the well, sun the, is the earth doesn't like leave its orbit in the <laughs> no. well i think a lot of people get confused else. by the fact that the earth spins yeah yes. and, and it also a, is tilted and, and it also is also orbiting. tilted and it's also spinning around yeah mm -hmm. like and and everything spinning around yep. so it's like the tilt causes the seasons the spin of the earth causes the days right. and the spin around the sun causes the years the year yeah. <laughs> like yeah no, so right. it's like the earth is eight light minutes away from the sun light minutes okay so i mean if you think about it eight light minutes doesn't sound like that much but no. it's Quite a ways for so, light I mean, to travel. Even if we travels. did get a little bit closer to the sun, it wouldn't. We wouldn't even notice. I don't think. No. I mean, think I about the know. planets. A lot of the planets, um, you know, like the moon, for example, is freezing cold all the time. Yeah. Even right. though it's the same distance from the sun as we are, it's all about that atmosphere. Yeah. All about that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, did anything terrible happen yesterday? Did, they, did there any airplanes fall and... from the sky? And dogs scream and okay. fall over? Daisy didn't know. even notice. I don't think any dog in Minnesota noticed. No dog noticed. Okay. There was no, because it was I pretty didn't... dark all day yesterday. All right. So, nothing biblical. <laughs> no, Not nothing happened. That right. nothing I've heard biblical. of. Not that I've heard of. All the kids were really disappointed, though. Which mm -hmm. was I'm sure. They didn't get to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Oh, well. I understand yeah. how that goes. Well, that whole thing is very, very interesting. There's no question about it. I mean, but now it's not going to happen again. Like, I will never, ever have a chance to see uh, a solar eclipse. Well, you'll be 94, so it's possible. Still be alive. 94, I thought. It, oh, it's 20 years from now? 20 years. Oh, for some reason, I thought So when you're 94, 94 and I take you and I wheel you out to watch the eclipse, you'll look at it and you'll go, you call that an eclipse? What's an eclipse? August 23rd, 2044. So there you go. So really close to Toots's birthday. 20 years and four months. 20 years. 20 years and four months. My God. We got to wait. I mean, there's another that. one the next year. So, hey, two what? in a row. We got a twofer. Is that what? normal? Uh, no, it's pretty unusual. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, 44 wow. and 45 are both giving us total solar eclipses in North America. Hmm. I wonder where they're going to be. Yeah, well, I was going to say, where's the... 2044 will totality. only touch three states. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's very, it's like probably Maine and so forth. Yeah. Let's see here. Where are you? View map. A lot of clips, clicks just to see this. It is amazing that they can predict all that stuff. It is. It is it's really I mean, it really There's a lot of people out there who all they do is calculate this crap all know, day. It's just amazing to me that they've got those kind of sweet math skills because I yeah. would never be able to do that. Got the sweet math skills. That's Let's see. Math skills. In 2044, it's going to be the very northwest tip of South Dakota. Yeah. The western bit oh, of we North could drive Dakota. There and, see it. and about half of Montana. So oh, it's okay. mostly going to be in Canada. I'll go stay with Natalie. Yeah. There you go. Well, you know, you go. Boise. We know state, somebody lives she's in, in Boise. She lives in West Fargo. <laughs> it's a That's couple miles closer. Nearer to the west there. side. 
And then I wonder, the 2045 is going to go through basically the middle of the country. So Oklahoma like City, one, yeah. Tulsa, Colorado Springs, Reno. Oh, right through West Palm Beach. There you go. So for 2045, you got to live that long. How so you is can that see the it. middle of the country? Well, it always arcs. Yeah. Eclipse is always traveling an arc. Yeah. So it's going to start in Florida and go through the middle of the country. It's going to go oh, that up way. west. Oh, okay. Because yeah, this gonna, one was like a diagonal line of yeah, Texas from Texas to, New Jersey. to yeah, up there. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to see all. Of, you know, what's amazing, amazing about that is I had a chance to go to Dallas and see it yesterday. I didn't do it, so by the time it comes back again, I'll be so old I won't be able to see it anyway. You had a yeah, twenty forty-five is a ways. No, if I wanted to see an eclipse. Oh, I thought somebody invited you to Dallas and you didn't. Share uh, it's with just me. A, it's like every day. You, know? uh, you get invited everywhere. It's on a, on a private airplane. <laughs> Yes, they're going to Dallas. send a private airplane. Oh, <laughs> <My> rock star. <laughs> <coughs> At least I hope the wings stay on like the corporate, uh, uh, the know, commercial yeah. airlines. I know, God. Uh, how many has it been this week? Like four airplanes lost part of their wing. What That's, the hell is that? I've only heard of one. <clears throat> no, there were like four three one, it, This one. year, I think there have been, yeah. No, been this year. Not mm-hmm. week, Dad. This year. Week, okay. year. What the hell is the difference? Uh, it's a big difference. But not much, really, because airplanes yeah, shouldn't point, be falling apart. Well, no, they should not. No, they should not be falling apart. How does that even happen? Bridges should not be collapsing, being hit by but what kind of tugboat was it or something? Yeah, it was a tugboat. Yeah, all that You're stuff right. shouldn't be happening. But yet here we are. It's a lot of things that shouldn't be happening, but uh, are we... People are not real happy with the economy right now, right? Because everything's so incredibly expensive and nobody can afford anything. Well, supposedly jobs are, uh, unemployment is better. Um, Mm -hmm. But the problem with it is that uh, wages haven't increased with the cost of living. So it's costing people about 30% more to live. God. Uh, They're talking about people like Andy and Alex's age. If they wanted to buy a house, they didn't already own one, which you're really lucky that you guys bought before COVID. Um, That it would cost, you would need to make another $45,000 a year as a household just to be able to buy a house. Okay, I have a question for the the two youth, Catherine. You and I will stand by and listen. The two youth on the show. Youth. We are spending billions of dollars to pay off student loans, which I will never understand why we would do that. Because if you want to go to college, pay for it, right? People don't have the money to pay for it. Well, well but that, the problem is... Much, but, but I don't understand why a plumber has to pay for somebody to get a, a dance degree. Sorry, yep. I don't get no, it. No, I don't understand yeah. that either. I, don't, like, I would understand if it was limited entirely to like useful degrees. Like, yeah, yeah. doctors. Yeah, lawyers. exactly. Doctors, not lawyers. No, lawyers can go to hell. <laughs> but this was caused by the greed of our college system. Our colleges are so 100%. incredibly greedy now. Well, they don't need to charge $100,000 no. a year no, for they do tuition, not. but they, they just don't. do it anyway because they know people will pay it. Um, and I, I, I don't want anybody getting scared here, but it's a little scary. It's quite scary, actually. So we're trying to pay off $40 billion more Um of the college tuition, I guess, which I understand. You want to go to college, pay for it yourself. That's just how it should be. And colleges stop being so damn greedy and try to make every dime you can. Then, of course, you look at the fact we're now going to spend a trillion dollars on climate change. And of course we are. I think that <sighs> if you're going to pay anybody school, it should be for tradespeople. Like, yeah, we need more tradespeople. We need people. more tradespeople. Yeah, people. we do. And it's nowhere near as expensive as college either. No. And no, it's actually a job that you can, sometimes you can train for even a year, 16 months, and you're out yep. in the industry making money, paying your taxes, and good paying jobs. That makes way more sense, like I said, than a dance degree or a sociology degree right. or a French librarian degree. I mean, what? Are right. we, why would we, why should people pay for these kind of I degrees? Agree. It's I stupid. I agree completely. It makes no sense. But I just, you know, it's buying votes. That's what the de- Democrats do it. The Republicans do it. They take our money so they can look like good guys. And all they're doing is trying to buy people's votes so they can win. That's true. I mean, it's disgusting. Why do people fall for that? Are people that stupid? Yes. <laughs> that was a quick answer. I mean, I've told you the story, I think, of, I forget who it was. Was it Pablo Escobar? It was one of those drug lords in South America. What he would do is he would go into a town and set up shop. 
Yep. He'll bring all of his murderers with him. Um, murderers. His band but of merry thieves. What he would also do is he would go to a bunch of random houses, knock on doors, and say, hey, I am going to pay off your house. So yep. here's the payment for your house. You own it outright now. There you go. And just by doing that to a handful of people per village, he became a heroic icon. To yep. a lot. Yes. And all he had to do, had dedicated he, threw, spies. he threw maybe like, I don't know, one thousandth of a percent <clears throat> of his net worth at these people. Yep. And they let him do whatever he wanted because they were like, oh, what a nice man. So all the murdering, drug uh, trafficking, probably human trafficking, that didn't matter because they got theirs. Yep. Well, and see once again. How it's always been everywhere since the dawn and of time. It always will be. And I was told by a very, very smart person, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Was it me? A college, yes, it was you. Mm -hmm. As a college professor, that's where the colleges got the idea. Is from looking at what Pablo S. He bought happiness for people, yep. therefore they loved him. And they said, well, why don't we do that? Why don't we just go ahead and start paying for everybody else's everything? Then they'll be happy with us and they'll vote for us. Well, there were certain yep. people in you know, New York that thought that the mob was good. Oh, absolutely well, they did. Tons of them, yeah. They absolutely yeah. they did. Well, I mean, and there's like, that's the other thing. It's kind of a gray area in a lot of cases because it's like, okay, you live in you know the shithole of the universe, New York, 1920. And there's like eight gangs all constantly firebombing each other and having shootouts in the street. And then all of a sudden this one gang comes in and just kills them all. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, hey, this, this new gang's actually pretty mm -hmm. cool. Right. Yeah, because there's no more random shootouts. My business isn't on fire. Sure, there's a gang extorting me for money, but hey, it could be worse. Oh, that's the way they looked at it, too. Hey, I know i got to pay them thousands of dollars every week or whatever, but it's worth it because they leave me alone. Yep, exactly. It's the way it's, that's how the whole, the whole world now is just money, money, money. That's all that matters. Speaking so of enforcers, too. the Lammer Hammer is here to collect. He's a Lammer Hammer. But he's not or maybe he's not. They can't hear? You're a disaster. Can you hear us? Mr. I don't think he can hear us. Lammers. Tim Lama Ding Dong. Hey, hey, sorry, my uh, headphones died and I had to recharge them. Uh, so I'm here, I'm here, and you guys are back. You're a disaster. Hooray! I'm a GD disaster. Oh, a GD yeah. disaster. No, Tim, you were just talking about the fact that the entire world is money now. Nothing matters other than money. Whether it's paying off people's tuition or doing this or doing that, it's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's talking about the wh how, how's that old soundbite go? Talking about the money all the time. Talking about the money all the time. I, I don't have any money. <laughs> so the guy goes, I don't have any money. I thought that was one. Yeah, that's oh, it's hilarious. But uh, of course, I'm here to distract you from all of that. Yeah, well, thank you. We appreciate with it. royal scandal. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? Actually, it's a royal scandal that took place a few years ago. Sorry, nothing new. Nothing uh, new. It's more tragic. I do love now, a royal obviously. scandal. With, okay. with, with Kate Middleton. I mean, God bless her. I hope everything yeah, goes out. Yeah, tough deal. But uh, in 2019, there was uh, an interview that BBC, the BBC did on their Newsnight program with Prince Andrew. Oh, God. About his interview with, Je uh, uh, an interview about his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. Uh. Which led to the prince's undoing it has all been made into a netflix movie called scoop oh, i talked God. about it friday Kristen talked about it friday it is an amazing movie that you must see it is so fascinating it's about how this producer this tenacious producer uh sam McAllister, her name is um got the prince to sit down amazingly to mm -hmm. to talk about his friendship with um, Jeffrey Epstein, who died in prison three months before. Oh, yeah. And, okay. and, yeah, yeah. And, and Jelaine Maxwell, if I got that pronunciation uh, right. Yeah, whatever her name is. I think Jelaine. you did. Jelaine. 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 That's probably the name she hears a lot in prison. She's so proud of herself, Tim. I didn't even know what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gross. you opened the whole can of worms there, Catherine. Sure did. Yeah, can you imagine her in prison? 
is late. She's still in prison, right? Oh yeah. She okay. So I she's don't the think only she's person ever getting out. Is she? She's the only person that went to prison for apparently trafficking no one. I know. It's nobody has ever. Yeah. yeah. There's been nobody. How did? How did she even get convicted when they couldn't bring any evidence of people that were actually doing uh, they this? They must have had something. But uh, mm -hmm. I do know this. As far as naming names, she's been keeping her mouth. Zoop. Yeah, yep. she is. She doesn't want to be at epstein -ed. I guess not. No, no, yeah. no. He, he hung himself there. Uh -huh. I don't sure think he did. So. I think he was more. Obviously, that's one of the things. That's one of the things that they talk about in the movie. But uh, oh, okay. Gillian Anderson, the X Files star. Oh yeah, she's as, good. Yeah, she's really good. Uh, I don't know if any Doctor Who fans in the house, but Billy Piper. Mm -hmm. uh, a former Doctor Who star is in it as well. She stars as a real Sam McCall uh, as Sam McAllister, and a real Sam McAllister wrote the book called Scoops, on which okay. this is based upon. Okay. And the reason I saw this and I know so much about this is because I, all right, sorry, obligatory plug for Forbes. I did interview Jillian, Billy, and the real Sam McAllister, and it was fascinating, especially talking with Sam McAllister. And getting her insight into how far does the press have to push when it comes to stuff like Kate Middleton, you know, yeah, yep. it's, yeah. you know, so we talked about, you know, the, the Prince Andrew stuff naturally, but I had, and this was actually before the BBC was scolded by viewers for their quote unquote insensitive coverage of this. I, you know, I don't know if it's so much the coverage of her announcement as it was, all the rampant speculation that before that, where is she? Oh, the Photoshop. I'm sorry. I maybe I'm stupid, but I, how the hell could you tell that that was Photoshop? That, that picture that she issued, Alex, Andy, I mean, you guys. Oh, yeah. Somebody's to... hand had an extra finger or some crazy yeah, thing. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. There was, yeah. there was, there was badly done. Weird photo editing happening. Yeah. Well, see, the interesting thing to me is it's like, okay, so if, if a royal disappears from their constant public appearances, mm -hmm. they instantly go to, oh, William must be having an affair and Kate found out about it and every now the whole royal family is falling apart and it's the... It's like, oh my God, the woman just went in and had surgery. Right. You got to think maybe she got some bad news. Maybe she just needs to recover for yeah. a while, you know? You uh, know, people go so crazy. I mean, not, not, I'm not excusing the American tabloids, but hasn't the British press notoriously just been venomous, horrible. especially with the royal family? I mean, horrible. they're just brutal over there. They are. They're horrible. I mean, everything is a New York. Not, don't, don't get me wrong. I think the New York Post headlines are hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Every day it's something that's slammed on and uh, on their cover, but it, it, it seems like every newspaper is like that over in britain where oh, yeah, absolutely scandalous every single mm -hmm. freaking day so yeah i think that they had to eat their lunch on this one because again you know they're and then you know after that i don't know this was more of a tiktok thing but apparently somebody said with kate oh it's ai i mean you really just have to go there for christ's sake yeah Oh my God. It's just, it's so sickening. I don't, I've never been a Royal watcher anyway, right? but you can't help. There's no way you can avoid this stuff now. There's just no, no way. See, if you were a Royal, wouldn't you like perform elaborate pranks? Like, you know, you pretend to like sneak a body out of your house or <laughs> Take perform, the rug out in the middle perform of the night. satanic rituals right up by your kitchen window, that sort of thing. I would, I'd be God, screwing Andy. with the press 24 hours oh, a day. A hundred percent. Yeah, oh, then absolutely. they'd probably even be worse. Well, well yeah, that's the idea is to make them look stupid by just like yeah. constantly baiting them. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's the problem is, and you, I think you discover this in um, Scoop. Scoop is that some people like Prince Andrew think they're beyond reproach. I mean, they just sure. think that, yeah, they do. I, you know, yeah. the, the big question, and it's such of a simple question um, that everybody to this day, including Sam McAllister, they ask themselves, why, why did he agree to do this interview when he really didn't have to, you know, uh, he probably was forced to, I well, because he, his know, reputation had been destroyed. 
a, yeah. a long time before Epstein died in prison. And now, I think yeah. that he was under some, uh, I think they were going to cut him off from everything and take everything away from him. And I think that a lot of bad things did happen to him. So well, probably, certainly after that interview, they did. I mean, yeah. and then I think he was stripped of his royal duties, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Whatever exactly. royal, what are royal duties anyway? I think they go and I don't know, talk to it's a lot of charity work. I know that. Mm. Tons yeah. of charity work. Yeah, and and funny enough, that was the opening to this interview. They ha he had some new charity that he was plugging, mm -hmm. and they said, "Okay, we'll talk about your charity, but." We want to address this with you. And miraculously, he agreed. I guess he went to because I don't know if he was Queen Elizabeth's favorite. They kind of imply that. Yeah. <laughs> and so he had to go ask mom permission. And she said, do what you think is right. And I think the biggest conclusion to come from come to get out of this is that I think the guy thought he was going to outsmart everybody. Mm. I thought he, he his ego was so big that. He's going to outsmart everybody with this whole, I can't recall. I, there were a yeah, lot of, there weren't yeah. any denials in the questioning. It was, I can't recall. It was like he was sitting in a courtroom. I can't recall. It I seriously recall would that. have been better if he would have said, you know what? I was doing a lot of heroin at that time and I've gone to rehab and, you know, I don't know what the, happened. The I was Stephen just too King high. Defense. Yeah, just absolutely. What, the Stephen the public King. seems to be more forgiving on that kind of thing. Well, you know, uh, sometimes those interviews do work. I remember when Hugh Grant uh, was busted. Oh, that's right. Uh, with uh, 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 hooker. a sex worker, as they, they call it. Sex him worker, in, yep. in a car, right? Yeah. And, Don't and you he feel like, an, Tim, that that was a publicity stunt? I was say, that's not even trying to hide anything. Don't you feel like that was set up? Well, you do have to wonder. I mean... And back then, I didn't think so, Cause, cause but I'm these, a days, bad boy. these mm -hmm. days, I mean, I mean, it might be a, pos a passe thing uh, now, but it used to be scandalous when a sex tape was released. All of a sudden, people were actively making sex tapes. Yeah, so they could yep. be uh, Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so I mean, <clears throat> there's a there's a great line, and I've heard it before, but there was this movie called America's Sweethearts where bi the great Billy Crystal was a studio publicist or something, and uh, somebody got into trouble and they asked Billy's uh, character, aren't you afraid of bad publicity? He goes, in this business, there is no such thing as bad publicity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just publicity. But, yeah, I mean, so the Hugh Grant thing was he's busted, has the embarrassing mug shot. He looked mm -hmm. embarrassed. And, and again, whether it's a setup or not, maybe he was acting, but he looked embarrassed. But then he went on Jay Leno. Uh, and you know, Jay had the famous opening question, What the hell were you thinking? Right. And right. you know, those so called apology <clears throat> apology tours kind of became a thing. Right. Mm -hmm. With that. It so did. I don't know. This obviously this interview was not an apology tour. And and I don't even again, I don't pay enough attention to the Royals to even know what the hell happened to Andrew, if not for the, the epilogue of this film. Um but I guess I did hear that he was stripped of his royal duties, but I don't think he went on an apology tour. I love that royal duties. Royal yeah, royal duties. duties. Yeah. I mm -hmm. can see why I can see why they're scrutinized, obviously. Um and and, and really it just kind of comes down to a matter of the public. Why why are you putting up with it? Why not if this is an unacquainted thing, why can't you bring it to have a referendum or something to end it? Right. I, I don't know. I don't have nothing against the royals personally. I'm just well, saying I'm the glad brand, you don't deal with it here. The brand of the royal family actually brings a lot of money into Britain. People want to see the palaces. They, I mean, what, what, what do you do? Do you take away everything that they have and make them go live in Balmoral? I mean, <laughs> I mean they pay a oh, ton of ta they pay a ton of taxes because they have to pay property taxes just like mm -hmm. everybody else. That's why they opened up all the palaces to the public because they were all oh, yeah. like, oh my God, we have to spend, you know, we have to pay millions yep. and millions of dollars in taxes. So I don't know how you just delete the royal family. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just don't, I, I think it's a branding thing. I mean, if you take away the royal family, then London and Britain is just another big stinky city. Yep. 
you know, there's no culture left to it other than just another melting pot. It's true. That's what they want, though. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it would be good or bad for the. Have you, have you, I would imagine at some point you've been to London and seen all that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I did. I I was 18 when I went. So, I mean, I, memories are scant of it. But I do remember trying. I was, you know, everybody tries to mess with the uh, <coughs> the guards. The guards I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't do anything obnoxious, but, you know, it's like you got to. That's what you say. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, like I say, I was 18. No, no. But it is pretty amazing how they just sit there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what did we do? And when we went to London with the kids, we took them to Changing uh, of the Guard, Tower of London, of the, Tower of uh, London, Changing of the Guards. We went and saw the royal carriages. The carriages, yep. We went to the War Room, mm -hmm. which I, I I don't know if that belongs to the Crown or if that's just I don't a think so. Public museum. Uh, yeah, I mean, so you go and do stuff like that. If there's no royal family, then they would probably just everything would just revert to some sort of a museum, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, the queen yeah. owns all those jewels. Well, they, yeah, they can't just like steal her belongings or their belongings. It what? belongs in the family. So even if the family's not royal anymore, they still own all that stuff. Right. So well, much, much of it was were gifts from other countries and mm -hmm. nations. And well, they're still gifts. They still own them. Yeah, that's right. That's true. The only thing I love about that is uh, that war room that she was talking about. Yeah, where Winston Churchill... <laughs> Laid yeah. in bed most of the time. Laid in bed. Yeah. Square feet. <laughs> Deal with. The I am not kidding you. He was about the size of a pop can, for Christ's mm -hmm. sake. The bed is <laughs> tiny. I mean, it's tiny. Well, then why did Gary Oldman have to put on the uh, fat <clears throat> for uh, find Darkest Hour? Well, oh, no. he wasn't a he wasn't a thin man. No, he was not very tall. No. I All the cigarette smoke stunts your growth. I thought Winston he was kind of a large Churchill. guy for a. For a Brit. Winston Churchill was five six. So in actuality, he was about five six. Yeah, an oh. inch taller than me. So not <laughs> tall. <laughs> oh, I didn't know he was short. And that's probably overstated too. So he was probably about five three. How much did he weigh? Seven hundred. That's a good question. Let's see here. Winston Churchill weighed two hundred fifty pounds. Oh, Whoa, at five six. <laughs> that's, a, that's a stout man. He's he was stout, and that was a hundred years ago he when it was, was not stout. easy to gain a whole lot of weight. That's what? true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was his heaviest in the early fifties. Apparently, well, he liked, he liked pounds, so. cigars five, and he liked uh, brandy or something. Bo yeah. 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 Alcohol will put on weight very quickly. Oh, God, yeah. I have One no thing. question about it. Very I will tell you, you have to see, if you haven't seen Darkest Hour with Gary Oldman, it is a phenomenal movie. So yes. I like it anyway. Awesome. It's I very, do. very good. But, but next week, I haven't screened the movie yet, but there's a movie called The Ministry of, Ungent Un the Ministry of Un Ungentlemanly Warfare That's about true. this secret mission. Name. Yeah, it, 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 well, I, you saw how I had a problem even pronouncing yeah, it. Yeah, it's a terrible name. But uh, yeah. it is about a secret uh, operation that Churchill may or may not have known about. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, to take down a, a Nazi deal. And uh, there, the Churchill character is in it, although the picture itself, some of the uh, actors, and you're going to like this, uh, Henry Cavill, of course, Superman. I think he's great in everything. Mm -hmm. And and our favorite, Alan Richson, is yeah, in it. he's he's terrific. Jack Reacher himself. Jack Reacher, <laughs> he's a big fella. If, if you haven't seen it now, speaking of Richson, I love this movie, uh, Ordinary Angels. It's uh, yeah, it's a faith based movie. I think I re I did review it. Uh, on uh, the, the morning show. And he plays a real life father of two young girls. He lost his wife to a very rare disease. He has two young daughters. The youngest one is in dire need of a liver transplant. And this person, uh, who's a hairdresser in this small town outside of Louisville, and Joe uh, from Louisville uh, alerted me to this real life story. Uh, she just out of the goodness of her heart tried to help this family and she was dealing with demons of her own but Ooh. found a way to bring out the good in so many people in this small town and it is an extraordinary movie it you can rent it on video on demand right now i don't know when it's actually streaming but it's worth seeing it is worth seeing and 
it's it's faith based, but it's not the fire and brimstone, wag your finger at, you know, sort of. It's not a religious movie, right? I mean, it is and it isn't. It's about goodness. It's about goodness, and even the simplest acts of goodness can go an incredibly long way, and mm -hmm. you'll see that in the movie. But uh, easily one of my favorite movies of the year so far. And, and that's not only because Alan Richson, which I – do I understand that when he takes off his shirt, there's somebody on this uh, stream yard deal that kind of – oh, I think Tommy said something about that, didn't yeah. you, Tom? <laughs> I can't remember who it was, though. No, oh. no, she's, 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 she's uh, silent on this whole issue, it seems, <clears throat> Catherine. <clears throat> you know. Sorry. Have you not been paying attention? Sorry, I got a tech, <laughs> urgent text message. Oh, urgent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's we were okay. talking about how somebody might be in love with Alan Richson in this She group. knows I'm that. She's faking love. out. <laughs> Just hey, a little. I, Patty's with you. No, no big deal. I, I I feel so damn inadequate whenever we watch Reacher. Well, I mean, I, he's not even human. No, he's big. Man. He's, he's like a big fella. Not. He's like an he AI man. Yeah. <laughs> he's You're right. Just walking around. Now, you know what? You just started something. There's going to be TikTok videos about Alan Richson being an AI creation. Yeah, yeah that, well, probably true. Yep. And he is the perfect specimen. I will tell you that. <laughs> He is a hell of an actor too. He's a good actor. Yeah, he's great. He's great. And and I know I've said this on the in the podcast before, but the guy actually tried out for American Idol. He can sing. He's a songwriter. He oh, I didn't know that. Of course he can. Yeah, of, of course. course he can. <laughs> of course he can. Yeah, of course he can. So and the people. thing that just from seeing interviews and reading stuff, the thing I love about him most, incredibly dedicated to his family. They go with oh, him see, everywhere that he makes goes. Me love him. Yeah, 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 you know, you got to be rooted in that, baby, because that's what I'm all about. That's what you guys are all about. And, uh, boy, there's just something about that that just makes you admire him even more than you Absolutely. already do. Absolutely. When we were talking with Amelia Santanello about her relationship with Frank, what was that, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, three weeks yeah, ago? Yeah, uh, two weeks ago, yeah. On, on our show, um, she was saying one of the reasons why she – fell in love with him is because he was so dedicated to his mom yep, and his family. Mm -hmm. yes. It's true. There's no doubt about it. I still love the fact that Jack Reacher is 6'4", and the previous Jack Reacher was 5'6". <laughs> well, they just shoot up. Yeah, they shot up. <laughs> yep. Or, or, and I was, uh, I, this is something I don't suggest you do. Um, People think, you know, Hollywood's so glitzy and glamorous. Well, obviously, right. they shot productions in Minnesota. Uh, and uh, a few of us dopes were invited to go stand on the set for seven hours while they filmed a press conference scene. Whoa. And mm. when Emilio Estevez came out, this is the Mighty oh. Ducks 3. Yeah, when he came good. out, it's like, out come the crates. <laughs> we had a bunch of crates and a meal boxes, yep. he stood on the crates so it's like he oh. really oh yeah oh yeah oh, so it, many of them are tiny very they like common. tiny tiny people with giant heads that's yep. what they like yeah they do like that yeah. that's mm -hmm. true but the truth about uh, about jack reacher the movies is that first of all i didn't read the reacher books and you know i know officer dave would have known the difference but i certainly didn't I didn't. I would have had no idea the guy was six five in the books. I mean, he was just Tom Cruise being an action guy, and oh, Tom yeah. Cruise, let's face it, is very good at an action guy. Yeah, but he is. Yep. You know, when He's you see those movies too. and you see this series, it's like it should have been Alan Richson. Obviously, you know, he was a lot younger then, but it could have been. Yeah. It's a, it's a Ral a Alan Richson type that they needed yes, for those films. But hey, man, you get Tom Cruise to agree to your movies, you take Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't hit Tom Cruise's movies average like three hundred million dollars a piece or something. Well, he makes Jeez. the money. He makes a lot. Of well, dough, man. the uh, Mission Impossible, uh, not Fallout. That was the one last time. Uh, what the heck? Dead Reckoning. Oh yeah. They've retitled it because they realize that Dead Reckoning Part One. People don't want to see a cliffhanger. They don't like. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They they decided after the movie underperformed, believe it or not, underperformed, mm -hmm. uh, that they would drop the Dead Reckoning part one and part two from the titles. And I don't even think part two, which was delayed a year in release because of the strikes, 
uh, will be called Dead Reckoning anymore. It'll be called something else. But you don't uh, know yet. Yeah, it was a rare deal where it underperformed, and I thought it was a great movie. I mean, mm-hmm. but, you know, I'm, after you really, really raise the bar with Maverick, you know, I guess you just expect a billion-dollar movie out of everything he does, and it certainly didn't reach that, that height this time. It did not. Tim, I got to ask you a question about this because streaming is magnificent, but it is basically killing television. Uh, And by that, I mean, I know there's a Paramount channel and there's a Peacock channel and there's all that, but those are a third and fourth choice. Catherine and I watch some stuff on those channels, but the the streaming stuff is just so much better than, than television. Yeah. Well, I cut the cable a long time ago, and I had the local yeah. channels. Yep. Um, truth be told, I mean, unless it's a Vikings game, I'll put on the digital antenna. Other yeah. than that, on streaming, you can get all the apps if you want to yep. see the news. Yep. And you can yeah. get the apps on your Roku thing. So, And the great part about that is you're not sitting there from beginning to end. You can say, I want to see this story. I want to see this right. story. Right. Whatever. So... Really, for broadcast television, because what do they do? They'll put it on whatever their streaming services the next day. So yes. I think even they have pretty much they're slowly raising the white flag, saying, "You know what? There's just no future here." Yeah, there really is not 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 for broadcast television. I remember yeah. Andy, uh, Louis Anderson about 15 years ago told me he, or maybe it was even longer, that he saw in the future that we everything would be a la carte. Yeah, we're watching, right. and yeah, yep. he was one hundred percent right. Well, and the biggest mistake, and I've said this a ton of times before, cable did not offer a la carte. No, no, they and did not. That you right. know, you got you got your dish two hundred, where you get about fifty channels that you would more than that, hundred fifty that you would never in your wildest no. dreams ever tune into. Yes, mm-hmm. they were just garbage channels, and. But in order to get the channel that you wanted, you had to purchase, you know, a certain package. Right. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. that's how they made their money. But after, you know, a time when streaming started coming along and, you know, let's be honest, the, the, the pandemic was the big, it was a boom time for streaming. Right. And then right. they, then they got into trouble because they, the, the, you know, the Disney pluses and all that got into trouble. And even Netflix, I would imagine, because then they were sinking way too much money into programming and started to lose money. So at the end of the so-called streaming wars, Netflix apparently came out on top. Netflix, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, according to media outlets, you know, major trade publications won the streaming uh, wars. Although, look, man, I love Max. Uh, Amazon Prime Video is terrific. Uh, Disney Plus, which I guess they lost a ton of money on programming. They did, yes. They lost and then a ton. Hulu, um, you know, I mean, there's so many great streaming channels and new shows every single week. Remember for broadcast how we used to have to wait until the fall season? Oh, yes. yeah. Highly anticipated. It's amazing to have lived through all of this, to see these major <laughs> changes. To, to yeah. go from eight for me, to go from albums to eight tracks to cassettes, mm-hmm. to CDs, yeah. back to albums, or then to digital. Right. <laughs> well, it's, I it's wonder, crazy. I wonder when, um, like, uh, apartment buildings and condominiums, they have um, cable included with your HOA. Yes. Yeah, mine did when I lived in Minneapolis. And I'm wondering, why are they spending money on this? I don't know. I never we, we, have, we have cable and we have Roku. And yep. we do we do every once in a while go over to the cable thing just because we have it for um, some local news or some yeah, sports kind of or something mm-hmm. like that. But we rarely ever use it. Oh, but local news and sports you can get over the air too. So that's I, exactly. But it, just because it's there and we can you know, right, we don't but have to buy another app, which is nice because like the the uh, trying to watch the baseball games, the Minnesota Twins, the only absolute way that you can do that is to get um oh, is to, Nan, get, uh, get to, call. to get direct tv which is another uh, that one is really crazy expensive yes it is that app is nuts which one so, direct tv so it's like oh, either yeah. you you yeah. either can roku and get direct tv or yeah it's just the choices are stupid 
It should just all be available on mm -hmm. one streaming service, and you should just be able to pick it. I don't know. You should why just be able to go to have... like the Twins website and yeah. pay ten bucks a month yeah. for Twins coverage Absolutely. or whatever. Absolutely. I don't well, know why. It, and there is an MLB app, but it doesn't carry all the games. Well, it's because they make deals with stations, and they make yes. deals in regions. And in this region, yep. this station has exclusive uh, rights to broadcast our games, and that sort. Of, so a bunch of like legal stuff, but for intellectual people that live stuff. out of state and still want to watch a you know a hometown game from where they grew up, they should be able to watch it because it's not going to compete with the market area that they're that the home games are in. And everything's right? online now. Everything competes with everything. There's no such well, thing as a region anymore. I know YouTube. I thought it was Directv actually that had the NFL Sunday Ticket, but then YouTube bought that. Yeah. So it's kind of funny that is there a I version know. of that for baseball? There's, I don't know. There's YouTube TV that you can once again though you have to buy it. It's a it's monthly expensive service. Too. And it it's means expensive. like seventy bucks a month. It's Whoa. really expensive. Yeah, because everybody and, was squawking about cable. You know, if you had all the premium channels, you were paying upwards of two hundred and fifty. Well, you're easily paying two hundred and fifty if you get every single if you streaming. if you pay for every single app. Yeah. yeah. Everything you want to yeah, see. it's kind of like cable all over again. But it is. again, getting back to the a la carte argument, it is a la carte now because I'm not being told which streaming services I have to get in this package. Mm -hmm. I can say I want Amazon. I can say I want Max. I can, you know, all that sort of stuff. So the choices are there, but ultimately the expense is still there too. <laughs> Just in a different expensive. sort of. Uh, what, six of one, half a dozen of the other, whatever. I mean, As what they, it's yeah. saying, it's just like one way or another, they're going to get you. <laughs> and yep. they got me. Sooner they or later, me. they're going to get you. That's we only right. got a few minutes left, Tom, Timmy. I want to ask you this because it came up uh, this morning on the show. Some of these, I mean, the way they're putting these things together now, is it just too complicated for people to watch the shows they want to watch? Because you got to go to this, and then you got to go to that part, and then you go to this part. I mean, is, can people follow this path? I, I, I think so. I mean, you know, oh, okay. you're talking to somebody who, this is in my brain, 24 hours a day. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah. It's all secondhand knowledge. I mean, I mean, I just know. I just know because it's so ingrained in what I do. But I, I don't know. I mean. Well, like you my know, father, is, when he was, for you yeah, now, when he was in the, TV. oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, go I ahead. Sorry. Step on you. Um, when my dad was in uh, assisted living, Andy had to set up an Alexa. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. that he could watch uh, the rosary or yep. Wheel of Fortune or whatever. It would just turn on mm. at a certain time. Right. Because there's no way with his vision and everything that he would have been able to right. deal with going to different apps and clicking yeah, it's very you know, little thing it, i mean yeah for an for an older person yeah it's really impossible but if you have somebody that can set up an alexa that can just pop it on mm -hmm. and then if they don't want to watch it they can just say alexa turn the tv off right that that t sort of technology is makes it so that most people can download yeah it helped them a lot. something yeah mm -hmm. well then getting back to your point tom i guess it is would be difficult I mean, again, I you guess, know, for somebody yeah. like me, I mean, I just automatically know where to go. But for a large part of the population, again, some people who aren't really familiar with streaming, I can't imagine my mother-in-law trying to deal with it. Yeah. And I mean. and yeah, so yeah, I, I guess so. Because especially when they grew up being used to watching broadcast, maybe it's those older generations that are keeping broadcast around. I think so. Good and at some, point, at some point, it's just going to, yeah. it's like attrition. It's just going to kind of fall away, I think. Yep. I, I think that's right. So, yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, I, um, you know, good thing for me is that I, like I say, I just have my favorites. But it's, it's, it is, there is a ton of content coming out every week, though. Like I say, no, no fall season every more, uh, anymore. No, every, no. every week is fall season as far as I'm concerned now. Sure seems like that is going to do it. Any closing words from anyone? No, uh, other than that, I, I screened a movie called Civil War last night, and I will All be right. talking about it Friday. Oh, is this that weird one where Texas and California team up? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Super. Yeah, California and Texas join forces 
Hmm, in a civil war right. no it makes no <laughs> sense and everyone's like what the hell are these people thinking i'm guessing there's some explanation for how this could possibly happen and it was all just you know yeah it, it i i yeah i i will talk about it friday that's all i can say right now mm -hmm. I mean, it just uh it was a hell of an experience i'll tell you that much mm. there you go. so we'll talk about that friday we'll talk about it next week as well so uh tommy we'll talk friday and the rest of y'all will talk next week have Thanks, a great Timmy. Week. See ya. All right. Bye. That's Timmy, ladies and gentlemen. That's Timmy. I gotta ask you, Andy and Alex. I gotta ask you a question. You're millennials, are you not? Uh, yes, yes, we are. We are both millennials. Did you see the number of millennials that are moving out of L.A., New oh, York, God, yeah. Chicago? The millennials are all headed to Tampa, Florida. Tampa. Tampa. Yeah, they love Tampa. Tampa. Saint Pete? Tampa, St. Pete. Well, they yep. always, it's like a, for a long time, it was Colorado. Nashville was huge. Nashville. For a long time. Uh, cr specifically, Christian millennials, Boise, Idaho. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like yeah. the last three years, every yep. Jesus loving millennial has headed <laughs> to Boise. There's like, it must be just like a compound there yeah. at this point. I don't know. But yeah. Tampa's the new one. All right. Tampa's well, and people are fleeing those like big, very partisan cities. If you look yes. at, you can yeah. see the um, net immigration for each state or the net population growth for each state. Right. And all those very partisan estates, this very partisan blue states, they're all losing population now, despite yeah, the insane yeah. amount of immigration they're pulling in. So that means a lot of people who live there are leaving. Yeah, they are. Make so sure that the news this morning. All right. We will talk to you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right, love bye. You, bye. Reminds me how you talking